In this video, I was gonna break down three things that I wish I knew earlier about attracting and creating what I wanted into my life. And when I learned these three things, my life changed forever. But the crazy thing is, I never was taught them. I don't know if it was on purpose or just, nobody realizes these important things, but in this video, I'm gonna break that down for you. So my name's Jake with jakeducey.com. Make sure you hit the bell notification on this video so you're notified for future episodes. Right there down below is jakeshypnosis.com, pinned to the comments in the description. It's my free success hypnosis to reprogram your subconscious mind. And let's dive right into this video. So the first thing is the law of equal and opposite forces. I remember learning about these laws of motion when I was like a junior or sophomore in high school. I only vaguely remember them because I always cheated in physics class, but I do remember that one because it was kind of an important one. It was law of equal and opposite force. For every force, there's an equal and opposite one. I never thought much about it until I started looking more into the laws of the universe, the ones we aren't told, the ones that can change our life, the ones that can help us reclaim our destiny, the ones that people have always known, but somehow our civilization has like forgotten. You know, the ones in the secret libraries in the Vatican, you know, those types of ones, right? So I realized something very powerful out of all of this. So think about the law of equal and opposites, not for throwing a brick off a wall and then we can calculate the speed, but think about it like this. For every force in your life right now, there's an equal and opposite one. Meaning for everything that's tough right now, for everything you don't want right now, for everything that's going against what you're imagining and visualizing, there is an equal and opposite force. There is a stream moving in the other direction. It is a basic fundamental law of the universe that of which you and I are a part of and everything in our life is a part of because it's all energy and energy is always moving. So you may not be where you want to be financially and it's almost like the current's been against you for a while. You could be in debt. You could not be making the amount of money that you want. You could uh, have just lost a job. Your business could have dried up. Things could be pretty good. You know, maybe things are solid, but they're not as good as they could be. There's an opposite force to everything right now in your life. And when you understand that everything is energy and energy is never created or destroyed, what that's telling you is everything that you want that you don't have already exists. And when you understand there's an equal and opposite force, there's an equal and opposite energy to everything. Then the question is, what are you opening your mind to right now? More of the same? You can have in the next 48 hours the best news you've had in a long time. And it might have to do with romance. It might have to do with money. It might have to do with your career. But you've got to open your mind to it and stop defining the possibilities based off of what you see, based off of your senses. There is an equal and opposite force. So allow yourself to surrender your mind to the universe and say, uh, uh, thank you, God, for showing me a way that I cannot see right now. My life is now blessed with new miracles, new opportunities, and fresh energy that's bringing in new financial abundance, new relationships, new friendships, new business encounters, better romance than I've had before. It's growing every single day, and I'm thank you, God, thank you, universe, thank you, life. It feels good to know that there's an equal and opposite force, and I don't have to figure it out, and I'm just gonna let go. I see this other stream over here, and I'm gonna allow this stream to take me. And this stream is the stream of life. It is the stream of the divine matrix. It is the stream of God, of spirit. And it's available to you right now. And if you can take a breath and let go right now, it's about to bless you. Number two is the law of gestation and incubation. So everything has a gestation and incubation. We just had a, our baby's first birthday. So Ashley, my wife, had a gestation and incubation for our baby. It's about nine months. Carrots have a gestation and incubate. Everything does. 
and so do all of your dreams. They have a gestation and incubation period. And when we don't recognize that, when they don't happen as fast as you want, it's easy to dismiss them. It's easy to think you don't live in a friendly universe. It's easy to, to drop into that. Albert Einstein said the biggest choice you'll ever make is do you live in a friendly or hostile universe? But most people look at the scoreboard and they go, well, I guess it's not meant to be. Imagine if you planted a bunch of carrots and tomatoes and cucumbers and you went out 72 hours later and they weren't cucumbers and carrots yet. Would you go, oh my God, this whole nature thing doesn't even, this is such a scam. This is such a scam. Like you would never do that because you understand there's a gestation and incubation. But what happens is we don't do that for our life. And what I'm asking you to do is give that to yourself now. Understand that there's a gestation and incubation period for your financial goals, your career goals, your romance, for whatever you want. And if it just because it's not here yet doesn't mean it's not on the way. Lack of evidence is not evidence of lack. Lack of evidence is not evidence of lack. Because the person might need to come from Europe or Canada, or New York, or Montreal, or, or Africa, or Chile, or Phoenix, Arizona. I mean, the money's already being printed. They're printing so much money, printing so much money, they're devaluing the currency at record speed. So the money's already out there. And some of it already has your name on it. But money has ears, and it hears when you call, and it hears when you don't call. And here's when you talk bad about it. You would never talk to your family the same way that you would talk to, talk to money. And so what I'm asking you to do is recognize how much powerful your mind is than you could ever possibly imagine. And this opens up the doors to what William Blank used to say, when the doors of perception are cleansed, everything will appear as it is, infinite. Now the third and final one is the law of attraction, but I want to explain it in a way that you haven't heard before because the law of attraction, the secret, people see in the movie, there's a bunch of people that make YouTube videos about it, but I don't think it's understood in any real depth. The law of attraction is a universal law, but it is a secondary law to the law of vibration. The law of vibration says everything is energy. We live in an ocean of motion. Every single thing, including the chair you're sitting on, is just a mass of energy moving at a very high speed of vibration, and it appears to be solid because of the fact that it's moving at the speed of light, and our eyes only pick up the bandwidth of this visible light. So we start to think that these things are all solid, but they're not. So the law of attraction is a secondary law to the law of vibration. Law of vibration says everything is energy and energy is always in motion. Law of attraction says similar energies attract to one another. But instead of like making this in the me metaphysical way, so let's look at it in basic psychology, use some everyday examples so you can see it work. You know the old ad ad adage, birds of a feller flock together. I said feller, I meant to say uh, birds of a feather. So think about that. Think about the fact that we subconsciously attract to ourselves the people that uh, we have most in common with. If we love drama, we're usually attracted to people that also love drama, right? And, and other examples, if, if we love peace, maybe we're attracted to other people that are interested in the same type of uh, like hiking or, or, or yoga. Normally, birds of a feather flock together. Misery likes company, the same people that like to complain at, at work, those are the people that hang out together subconscious energies gravitate to one another but then if you look at it from not a psychological type of perspective look at it as a law of attraction everything is energy you are energy i am energy we'll flash a picture on the screen so you can start to view yourself as an energy field because that's what you are because your hand isn't the end of your body your body ex your the, the electromagnetic field of your body extends quite a few feet outside of your hands outside of your chest Everything is energy, your thoughts are energy, your feelings are energy. So imagine yourself like a radio broadcasting tower transmitting a frequency. And in return, you send out a, uh, a, a frequency, which is really just energy with certain information stored in it. And that information is uh, your level of consciousness. It's love, it's fear, it's, it's abundance, it's prosperity, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's doubt, it's misery, whatever, energy we've encoded something in it and we've transmitted it into the universe 
And like a boomerang, we bring back similar patterns of energy or frequency patterns that we send back out. Because similar energy attracts and everything is energy. Everything is energy. Science tells us energy is never created or destroyed. Energy is never created or destroyed. So where's all the energy? It's in a field of possibility outside of visible light, but it's here right now, omnipresent in this very moment. That's like the whole idea that when people go like, do we live in a simulation, bro? Elon Musk says we live in a simulation, dude. It means all the possibilities already exist simultaneously and consciousness is what's creating them. And so if we shift our energy and we shift our vibration and we shift the way we think and we feel about ourselves and about our world, then what happens is we change our energy from the law of vibration. And if you change your energy from the law of vibration, you change your point of attraction. We are all points of consciousness. We are points of energy that attracts to itself similar patterns of frequencies that match our own perception. So thus, if you start viewing yourself in a totally different way, instead of looking at your little tiny bank account and saying you're screwed, instead of looking at your, at your relationship you don't really like, but you're afraid to be alone, so you stay in this relationship you don't wanna be in, instead of looking at it, you close your eyes and you build a vision. And when you close your eyes and build a vision and you feel like it's real, guess what you do? You start to pull it from the quantum field, from the non-physical dimension. Law of attraction is very scientific. We know from quantum physics, the observer effect said that um, subatomic everything is smaller than an atom. We think this is made up of atoms. They're really made up of 99.999% empty space, but they're made up of subatomic particles. And when you get to the lowest level of subatomic particles, the observer effect of quantum physics showed us that sometimes those particles would be visible and real, what we would call real, they're still real when they're invisible. They're just outside of the bandwidth that, that of energy we can pick up. But when we see them, we call them particles. When we don't see them, we call them waves. Waves meaning energy, particles meaning that it is a real subatomic particle that is observable. They call it the observer effect because based off of the, the consciousness of the observer, based off of the observer, based off of the person watching it through this powerful subatomic uh, 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 microscope, the subatomic particles would change. So they would be real and not real at the same time. Lack of evidence isn't evidence of lack. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. It's all in a field of energy. So the law of attraction is following the law, uh, is following the observer effect, which is consciousness creates the subatomic realm. The subatomic realm ultimately creates all the life circumstances of your life, but it's all a mirror reflection of your own perception and your own consciousness. And then that kind of becomes the game. Can I play this game? If you want to say this is a video game or a simulation, why don't we play the game where I don't allow anything in the outside world to control how I think and feel? So then I move from being a reactor to a creator. That'd be a fun game, right? Instead, they're telling us to play Grand Theft Auto or something, right? Let's go shoot that guy. Go shoot that guy. But think about it like that. Play that game today for the rest of the day. Can you play a game where your thoughts and your feelings are not controlled by your outside world? Most people allow their outside world to control their life. They say, cool video, kind of BS, don't really trust you. They go back to their bank account, there's no money in there, and they say, you don't understand, it's really hard. You've immediately lost, you already lost the game. You don't even get a participation trophy if you lose that quickly. Do you control your thinking, or does the world control your thinking? Do you control your bank account, or does your bank account control your thinking? Does your thinking control your bank account, or, your, or, or, or does your bank account control your thinking? Does your last dating control your, your thinking and feeling? The last one that didn't work out or the one you're in that's not that great, so now you're like, oh, I'm not sure if soulmate's really out there. Or do you control it? Does your own conscious free will as soul, do you decide it? And when you build your own pictures in your mind and at the opposition of the present circumstances of your life, you drop being controlled by them and you build your own picture, and you become emotionally involved in it, you send it to the subconscious mind, you activate the law of gestation that we talked about earlier because you plant a seed, a possibility in the quantum field directly into the subconscious mind, and then you bring about the means to achieve that. 
and then it gets really fun. So the question is, do you believe it? Because you don't have to believe it and you don't have to believe me, but I invite you to try it. Suspend your disbelief for a minute and play this game. See if you can, and every time you catch yourself being controlled by the outside world, whether it has to do with thinking about money, thinking about work, thinking about jobs, thinking about opportunities, thinking about romance, thinking about friendships, thinking about health, thinking about your, 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 your healing and your well-being and your fitness. Anytime your outside world controls your thinking or feeling, you stop and then you ask yourself with your conscious mind and your own free will, what do I want to think? How do I want to feel? And you reconnect to the realities that you intend to create. Supposedly, there's a quote by Albert Einstein and he says, to match and sustain the energy of what you want and you can't help but get it. That this is not philosophy, this is physics. So if you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you hit the bell notification to get notified by future episodes. Even if you hit the subscribe, dog, gotta double check, you hit the bell notification. I almost talked so fast that I said dog instead of gotta. Got a dog that, just joking. But right there down below is my free success hypnosis. It's jakeshypnosis.com right there down below. It's my free success hypnosis to reprogram your subconscious mind, build new belief systems, rewire your mind, and turn your subconscious into a magnet to get what you want quicker, faster, and easier. So check that out right there down below. Hit the bell notification. Let me know in the comments. Best day ever right there down below or one thing you enjoyed about today's episode.